So here in this problem, we are given the value of a, so that's given by sine alpha plus sine beta, and b is given by the sum of cosine alpha and cosine beta. Using this fact, we need to show that equation 1 and equation 2 both holds true. So we'll start with number 1. So here, let's first state whatever we are being provided with. Here, we are given the value of a. So a is given as the sum of sine of angle alpha and sine of angle beta we're going to label this as equation number one then we are also given the value of b to so b is equals to the sum of cosine alpha and cosine beta so let's label this as equation number two now what we'll do we'll square equation number one and add it to the square of equation number two so that means we're going to get a squared plus b squared so that must be equals to sine alpha plus sine beta whole squared and to it we are going to add cosine alpha plus cosine beta whole squared so that will be equals to so let's expand sine alpha plus sine beta whole squared so here we know that the expansion of a plus b whole squared is given by let me note it down so we have a plus b whole squared so this will be equals to a squared b squared plus 2 times a B. Now let's expand sine alpha plus sine beta whole squared. We're going to get sine squared alpha plus sine squared beta plus 2 times sine alpha times sine beta. To it, we're going to add the expansion of cosine alpha plus cosine beta whole squared. So we have cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus 2 times cosine alpha times cosine beta now let's combine the like terms so sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha now there are like terms because it's a standard identity whose value is one and then we have sine squared beta and with it we are going to combine cosine squared beta then we'll combine the third and the sixth term by taking two as the common factor so we're two times multiplied to sine alpha sine beta plus cos alpha cos beta right so that will be equals to the sine squared alpha plus sine squared cosine squared alpha that's simply one uh, let me note this down as well here yeah, we're using the fact that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta that that is one fine then Similarly, sine squared beta plus cosine squared beta, that's also going to be 1 plus 2 times. Now, coming to sine alpha, sine beta plus cosine alpha, cosine beta, this is nothing but cosine of alpha minus beta. So this is a standard identity. That means whenever we have cosine of alpha minus beta, so they expand to give us cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha, sine beta. So, we now have 2 plus 2 times cosine of alpha minus beta. Let's label this as equation number 3. So, this is the value of a squared plus b squared. Fine. Now, what we'll do? We'll next try to find out the value uh, b squared minus a squared. So, let's do that. For that, again, we're going to use equation 1 and 2. And using its help, we're going to find the difference in squared. So let's take equation number 2, square it, and from it subtract the square of equation number 1. So we have b squared minus a squared. So b is cosine alpha plus cosine beta. We have to square it, and from it we are going to subtract sine alpha plus sine beta. Right. So let's find out the expansion. So here we have cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus 2 times cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus we have sine squared alpha minus sine squared beta minus 2 times sine alpha times sine beta. Now, what we'll do, we'll combine some terms. 
So we will take the first term, which is cosine squared alpha, and combine it with sine squared beta. So we have cosine squared alpha minus sine squared beta. This is going to be one term. Next, we're going to take cosine squared beta, and with it, we're going to combine sine squared alpha. And then we are going to combine 2 cosine alpha cosine beta with negative 2 sine alpha sine beta. For that, we will take 2 as the common factor. So we have cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. So this will be equals to. Now, let me note down a couple of formulas here. Now, whenever we have cosine squared A, minus sine squared b so this becomes equals to cosine of a plus b times cosine of a minus b so this is what we will use instead of cosine squared alpha minus sine squared beta and cosine squared beta minus sine squared alpha and in the other case if we have cosine of alpha plus beta so the expansions give us cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of alpha times sine of beta right so let's use this so that means uh first term cosine squared alpha minus sine squared beta so this will become cosine of alpha plus beta multiplied to it will be cosine of alpha minus beta then coming to the next term cosine squared beta minus sine squared alpha so this will become cosine of beta plus alpha be very careful with the order so first comes beta followed by alpha this will be multiplied to cosine of beta minus alpha plus two times yeah, cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta that's nothing but cosine of alpha plus beta right now one thing we know that the cosine function is an order function that means if we have cosine of negative theta so this becomes equals to positive cosine theta. The reason I'm mentioning this fact, because we can rewrite this cosine beta minus alpha. So if we have cosine of beta minus alpha, so this is equals to cosine of, let's take the negative common, so we have negative times alpha minus beta. And using this particular fact, then this is also equivalent to cosine of alpha minus beta, and there will be no change in sign. So that means, now we will get cosine of alpha plus beta times cosine of alpha minus beta plus cosine of so beta plus alpha can be also written as alpha plus beta because addition is commutative and cosine of beta minus alpha this will become equivalent to cosine of alpha minus beta plus two times cosine of alpha plus beta right now here we can immediately observe that the first term and the second term they're exactly the same so they combine to give us two times cosine of alpha plus beta multiplied to it is cosine of alpha minus beta and the last term which is two times cosine of alpha plus beta so let's take only cosine of alpha plus beta as the common factor from both the two terms so here in the first term we will be left with uh, 2 times cosine of alpha minus beta plus 2 in the second term. This, this is the value of b squared minus a squared. Now immediately we can replace this value with b squared plus a squared because we have already obtained in equation number 3. a squared plus b squared that's 2 plus 2 times cosine of alpha minus beta. So this is also what we have obtained here and that means we can have cosine of alpha plus beta and to it will be multiplied b squared plus a squared. So this is what we have obtained from equation number 3. So this is the value b squared minus a squared. So finally, we can rewrite a cosine of alpha plus beta. So this comes up to be equals to b squared minus a squared divided by b squared plus a squared. And this is exactly what we have been asked to show. Hence, proof. So, let's verify. Yeah. So, cosine of alpha plus beta equals b squared minus a squared over b squared plus a squared. Now, let's go to the second one. The second one is fairly easy because we have the value of cosine of alpha plus beta. We can easily find out the value of sine alpha plus beta. So, here we can uh, use the fact that if we have 
sine squared theta and to it we add cosine squared theta so that's equals to 1 so sine squared theta can be also expressed as 1 minus cosine squared theta since we only need the value of sine theta so sine theta will be equals to plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta now for this particular problem let's use only the positive value so sine theta will be equivalent to square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta and therefore sine alpha plus beta can be also expressed as square root and under the square root we have 1 minus cosine squared alpha plus beta now this is a simple algebraic problem so we have square root of 1 minus in place of cosine squared alpha plus beta we were going to replace but b squared minus a squared divided by b squared plus a squared whole squared yeah so i'll leave this as an exercise for you to try out so this is nothing but our final expression which is 2ab divided by b squared plus a squared so this is also now proved